Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So currently, it is the midway point in the month of April. We have six and a half months to go before the presidential election takes place. And Donald Trump, he's in New York. They're having him on trial. He's allowed to campaign, but not as much because he has to appear in court very often. And he's going to get a lot of free media coverage from it, though, so it's very possible that it could backfire on the Democrats. But still, nevertheless, I thought we would take some time to do the updated mid-month election prediction for the month of April. We are six and a half months away, and Donald Trump just barely leads in the RCP average. And this is something that Democrats are cheering about because, oh, the polling is narrowing, even though Biden's job approval is exactly where it was when Donald Trump led in the aggregate by 4.3 percentage points. Donald Trump's favorable rating has actually gone up since then as well. So the polling tightening thing may just be Democrats coming home to Biden because they know that Biden's not going to be replaced at this point. They are going to be, you know, just riding with Biden as their nominee and hope that it pays off for him, even though he's got literally nothing to run on. There's not really a single issue that he can really use to get a leg up on Trump besides maybe the abortion thing. But even then, Trump is just saying, leave it up to the states. I'm not going to touch it, which is something that can neutralize the issue a significant amount. And the national popular vote does not dictate the presidential election winner. It never has in this country. You have to get to 270 electoral votes to win the presidency. And Donald Trump is leading in all of these swing states except Pennsylvania. And Biden's lead only comes from one poll with some questionable methodology. So you look at it and it's like he's in a very good shape, especially considering the fact that the polls, when Trump is on the ballot, they usually underestimate Donald Trump and they may be doing it once again. And I think it's important that we fill out this map. But before we do, I have to tell you guys about my very good friends over at My Patriot Supply. Because it's no longer a question of if something's coming, it's when. The only shock will be the what. Your gut, your instincts, the feeling you've had that something disastrous is on the way. All of it's true, but what are you going to do about it now while you still have some control? Your first step is going to my website, preparewithredeagle.com. Your next step is stocking up on multiple four-week emergency food kits from My Patriot Supply. You can save $50 per kit for a limited time. There's no better time to buy in bulk. My Patriot Supply is equipped to help you prepare. As the original Patriot company, they've helped over 2 million families ready themselves. These four-week kits with Ready Hour Foods provide over 2,000 calories a day, and they're sealed inside a rugged ammo can, so they last up to 25 years in storage. Just grab it and go when the crisis comes. You can get these kits for $50 off right now at preparewithredeagle.com. That's preparewithredeagle.com. Dot com. So let's fill out this map. We're going to be filling out the safe Republican states first, the states that are going to go for Trump by 10 points or more, no matter what. Then we'll do safe blue states, and then we'll go down to the likely margin, lean margin, and then the toss-up states. So Trump is going to win Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Alaska, the Dakotas, four out of the five electoral votes in Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana, Missouri, and now Iowa and Ohio and South Carolina and Maine's second district, all by a safe margin, 10 points or more. Now we're going to do Joe Biden's safe states. He's going to take California, Oregon, Washington, much of these eastern seaboard states up here as well. He'll take New York, although I think the margin could narrow. He'll take Maine's first district. He'll take Illinois. Again, I think the margins could narrow there. Same thing with Hawaii. And then we have the state of Colorado. So Biden, his floor in the safe states is higher than Trump's for now. Now we get to go move to the likely states, and that's going to change and be tilted on its head because Donald Trump 
is going to win the state of Florida, and he's going to take it by five to 10 percentage points. They're not even polling Florida. Democrats are, you know, pulling resources out of Florida in some instances. Yes, they're delusional enough to think that the whole abortion referendum is going to really move the needle. It's really not. The presidential election is going to trump that, no pun intended, by quite a bit. And Trump is going to take the state by the upper single digits. There was a poll that came out that had him up by eight, and that was a liberal-leaning poll as well. So it's very likely that Donald Trump is up in the state of Florida by a decent amount. And also, Texas. There was a poll that came out today that had him up by 12 in Texas. I believe there was a poll out of Marist, which is a left-leaning pollster, that had Trump up by 11. Polls in Texas underestimated Donald Trump in the 2020 presidential election by like four points. And the fact that he's already doing better than his 2016 margin, let alone his 2020 margin, in a lot of the polling is a very good sign. Trump is doing very well with Hispanics, and it's just also Biden's not doing very well with them. You're seeing that in South Texas, but also in some of the more suburban areas, Biden may be hitting a wall. The transplants are leaning more to the right that are moving in lately, and Hispanics are moving to the right to offset any possible trends. You have the border issue that's not really a very good look for Joe Biden. And even though Democrats, they milked the abortion issue in the midterms, they still lost by like 11 points in a lot of these statewide races, sometimes more. And Texas is a state that takes a very hardliner position on that topic. So ultimately speaking, Texas is not really in play. They will delusionally try to knock off Ted Cruz, and they will likely fail. So we can move on to the states that will be going in the likely Democrat column. We could start off with the state of Virginia. I think this is a state that is going to be turning a corner. Do I think Trump is necessarily going to make it all super close? No, but I think it's going to be like a six-point win for Biden. New Mexico is another state. If there is like a sleeper flip out of nowhere, maybe it's New Mexico just because of the high Hispanic population. And if Trump does better uh, with the white vote in New Mexico, that could also be enough to kind of pull him over. But I still think it's a very, very big long shot. I think Biden's going to take it by around six points. I constantly have said that Republicans have some untapped potential there. If they had a stronger Republican party in the state, they probably could be doing a much better job than they're doing right now. But as of right now, that's not entirely the case. So with all of the likely states filled out, now we can move into the lean states, the states that will be decided between two and five percentage points here. We could start off with Maine at large. Maine is a very unique state because of the fact that they have kind of a mind of their own. And they typically have a higher third party vote share. They did in 2016. That's why Donald Trump came pretty close out of nowhere to beating Hillary Clinton in Maine. He fell short by like three points, but I believe the state voted for Obama by like 17 points before that. And in 2012, it kind of rebounded, but still, I think it would lean Biden. There's been some polling that shows that if RFK Jr. does well enough that Donald Trump could pick off the state at large. But still, I think as of right now, I don't think that holds, but it will be closer than it was in 2020. Same thing goes for the state of New Hampshire, probably closer to a five-point win for Joe Biden up in the Granite State as well. And also we have the state of Minnesota. This will be going in the lean Democrat column. There were polls that have it close. I think it's going to be kind of a margin that we saw with Michigan in 2020, where Biden wins it by like two to three. The higher third party vote share is really going to eat into Joe Biden's margins as third party vote shares typically do in the state of Minnesota. And we also have Nebraska's second district. This is a district that I believe is going to be going in the Democrat column this time around. It just wasn't really redistricted very favorable. And while Trump may gain a little bit uh, in the area surrounding Omaha, like the exurbs, I just don't believe it's going to be enough. I think that Biden is going to hold that congressional district. So we also have to do the lean Republican states as well. We could start off with the state of North Carolina. This is a state 
the Democrats really need high black turnout to win. And they got that in 2020, but it was not nearly enough for them to pull the state off. And you probably will see Donald Trump continue to run it up in the eastern part of the state. A lot of the eastern part of the state moved right in 2020, moved even further to the right in 2022, where you saw a little bit of a rebound in these Charlotte suburbs, exurbs. I think the research triangle area keeps moving left, but I think that Trump is probably at the end of the day going to do well in the places he needs to the point where he'll take the state by like three to four points. And we could also look at the polling aggregate for North Carolina. Typically, the early polls underestimate Republicans there, but Donald Trump leads right now by four percentage points. He's even leading by a lean margin in the Quinnipiac poll, which is a very left-leaning pollster, as well as Marist. He's up by three, which is another left-leaning pollster that has more credibility overall. So we also have to go down to the state of Georgia here as well. It's also going to be going in the lean column. Same thing regarding the whole black energy that we see with North Carolina, but it's more consequential. A little bit of a drop-off in Atlanta really will doom Democrats because the Republican voters in the state, they will come out to the point where Trump is a very high floor. And then in terms of the suburbs, you have the higher third-party vote share. You have more high-profile candidates taking votes away from Biden in these counties that veered off to the left in both 2016 and 2020. You can kind of stop the bleeding a little bit, and Trump likely does better downstate as well. I think Trump could take the state by like two to three points. The polling also backs this up. He's up by four points. If you include RFK Jr., Cornell West, Jill Stein in the mix— Donald Trump's lead actually expands to 5.6 percentage points. I think as of right now, you have to be putting it in the lean Republican column, which leaves five states. And because I think Trump's going to get Georgia, I've said this before, it's very crucial he picks that state up first and then goes on offense trying to get a combination of, you know, 19 electoral votes to get to 270. He can get there through Pennsylvania or Michigan and Wisconsin combined or uh, Michigan and Nevada combined or Wisconsin and Arizona, Michigan and Arizona, you name it. There's a lot of pathways for Donald Trump. The map is wide open. This is not like 2016 or 2020 where he had to go out there, run the table, and then some. The map is wide open for a Donald Trump victory. And it starts with Pennsylvania. I've said since 2021, Pennsylvania will be ground zero for the 2024 presidential election. And we could look at the polls right now. Franklin and Marshall has Biden up by 10, but their last poll had Biden up by one. There was not really any reason for there to be that big of a shift in those two months. But also, if you look at their five-way poll, They have Biden only up by two, but Trump somehow gains in the five-way poll compared to the two-way. It doesn't make any sense to me. But in the other polls, Trump's in a very good position. I think, again, this comes down to white working class turnout. I think Biden will lose ground in Philadelphia City. He already lost ground in Philadelphia in 2020. He might gain a little bit of ground in the Philly suburbs, but I think you're going to see a lot of reversion eastern Pennsylvania. And I think Trump is going to get the turnout necessary to go out there and narrowly pick off the state and move it back into his column. The one concern I have with Pennsylvania does tend to be the mass mail-in system that they have there that will ensure Democrat turnout to be probably higher than it usually is. But in the presidential election year, there's going to be higher turnout across the board. And Donald Trump being the unique factor that he is, I think that he can work to offset that. And then we could look at the state of Michigan. Now, this is unexpected because of the Rust Belt 3 in both election cycles, Michigan was the one that was least favorable to Donald Trump. But now, polls consistently have shown that Michigan is the most favorable to Donald Trump. Still, I think Wisconsin is of the three. I think polls are underestimating him there. And I think that Michigan, I don't think he takes it by three at the end of the day. But I do believe that he takes it because you do have the auto industry. That's a big thing. Everyone's talking about, oh, it's Dearborn and Biden's going to lose Muslim voters. 
it's part of it, don't get me wrong, but this is mainly a auto industry thing, and you have a lot of independents that live in Oakland County, Macomb County. They vote solely based off of that. Biden with these EV mandates, it's crushing Michigan. You have the border crisis out of control. You have Gretchen Whitmer coming out and saying that she wants to incentivize people to house these illegal aliens instead of trying to deport them out of our country. It's a big mess. I think Trump is going to capitalize on it. I think he takes the state of Michigan. I think he also takes the state of Wisconsin, for the record, probably by a point or so more than he takes Michigan by. And the polls typically underestimate Trump in Wisconsin. It's a very, very weird state, a very hard state to poll. But we talk about Wisconsin, the Driftless area, southwestern Wisconsin, a lot of these rural areas, they're getting redder and redder. And it doesn't really feel as if there's going to be enough change in the wow counties to offset it because Donald Trump, because Biden's so unpopular, likely gains here and there in some of these like smaller metro areas where they have like a large white working class population like Green Bay, the Fox Cities, you name it. You know, Biden is definitely going to try to maximize Dane County to give him that advantage. It's a very high turnout county regardless, but still the far left's a little upset over the whole Palestine thing. I don't know if he's really going to energize enough voters to be able to offset any losses in the state. And you also have Racine in Kenosha moving to the right significantly. I think Trump takes the state of Wisconsin. And that leaves two states, Nevada and Arizona. And both of these states have a lot in common because they are both heavily suburban. The rural vote doesn't do a whole lot for Republicans in either state. And they also have a high Hispanic population as well that has moved right somewhat. And polls show Biden is struggling among Hispanic voters. That's why Donald Trump in Arizona is leading the polls by four and a half points. If he gets 49%, he wins based off of the third party vote share alone. That would be enough to give him the victory in the state. I don't think it's going to be by 4.5. We'll see how the whole abortion thing moves the needle. I think it might somewhat, but the ban's not even being enforced. And on top of that, the uh, referendum will be on the ballot as well. You might see some ticket splitting as a result of that. I think he can take Arizona. I think Maricopa County, people look at Maricopa County and they're like, oh, well, it's uh, moving to the left, but not uniformly. That's really the thing. It doesn't really tell the full picture. Uh, and there's also more ground to be made up in a place like Yuma. The border's a big issue. Mojave County, Trump could even do better in Mojave County than he's already doing. It's a very good county for Republicans in the state. I think he takes Arizona. I think he takes Nevada just so long as he's able to go out there and hold his 2020 margins in the rurals in Reno, which it's possible he can. Republicans did better in Reno in the midterms. He needs to cut the lead of Biden in Clark County, which he's already cut, but he needs to cut that lead down from about 9.4 percentage points. He's got to take that lead and he's got to cut that down to like five to six. If he does that, he wins Nevada. And Biden, I don't think, is going to be spending a lot of resources on Nevada just because it's six electoral votes. And I'm not saying Trump will spend a lot either. But still, I think that Trump is going to win Nevada at the end of the day. He's polling in Nevada up by 3.2 percentage points. It is true, polls have overestimated a lot of Republicans in the state, but they were pretty accurate in 2020 when Trump was on the ballot. And there's a lot of low propensity voters there that do favor Trump. So ultimately speaking, this is the updated map. 312 for Trump, 226 for Biden. Not a lot has changed since the last prediction. We're going to be doing another one at the start of May, but we have six and a half months to go. We'll see how these things affect the election in the coming weeks, and we'll you know update you guys with another election map. But as of right now, 312 for Donald Trump, 226 for Joe Biden. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.